वेलकम टू इंजीनियरिंग फंडा फैमिली दिस वीडियो इज अ पार्ट ऑफ माइक्रो प्रोसेसर एट जीरो एट फाइव वीडियो लेक्चर सीरीज एंड इन दिस वीडियो आई बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट हिस्ट्री ऑफ माइक्रो प्रोसेसर बाय इंटेल इंटेल हैव इनिशिएटेड डेवलपमेंट ऑफ माइक्रो प्रोसेसर वे बैक इन नाइनटीन सेवेंटी वन एंड फर्स्ट माइक्रो प्रोसेसर डेवलप्ड बाय इंटेल दैट वॉज फोर डबल जीरो फोर माइक्रो प्रोसेसर इन नाइनटीन there was upgradation in their technology and they have designed complex microprocessor right now in 2022 they are having core i3 core i5 and core i7 microprocessors available with 11 generation up to 11 generation they have launched till this date now now if you see this history in that you will get to know like they have upgraded with their technology so that upgradation that have not came within 6 month or within 1 year it took more than 4 decades so whenever new electrical or electronics engineer is entering in the world of microprocessor they cannot understand core i3 core i5 core i7 microprocessors directly the reason is there is a need of background there is a need of basic understanding you should have your fundamentals clear then only you will be able to understand what is happening with those huge complex microprocessor so here in this video what i'll do is i'll be discussing about history by intel after that i'll tell you why we should be studying 8085 microprocessor as well as 8086 microprocessor so let us initiate with history in which intel have designed first microprocessor that was 4004 in 1971 so if you see that processor that was having 2300 number of transistors integrated inside processor and clock speed was 108 kilohertz it was having 10 bits of address and 4 bits for data and total addressable memory was 640 bytes after that 8008 processor was designed by intel and it was introduced in 1972 with 3500 number of transistors clock speed was 200 kilohertz with 8088 and there were 14 bits of address bus and 8 bits of data bus with 8008 microprocessor and with 14 bits we can be able to address 16 kilobytes of memory after that 8080 processor came in 1974 there were 6000 transistors integrated in that processor with clock speed of 2 megahertz there were 16 bits of address and 8 bits of data with 16 bits of address we can be able to address 64k memory after that intel was having a huge success in that there was 6500 number of transistors integrated in 8085 processor that was introduced in 1976 it was having different version so clock speed was even changing with respect to version so that range was 3 to 6 megahertz general model was having 5 megahertz of clock speed and address bus and data bus were 16 and 8 bits respectively with 16 bits of address bus we can be able to address 64k b memory after that again intel was having a huge success in terms of development of processor with 8086 it was introduced in 1978 with 2900 number of transistors integrated inside that processor clock speed of that was 5 megahertz address bus were 20 bits and data bus were 16 bits and with 20 bits of address bus we can be able to interface 1 megabyte of memory so that is these two processors that have changed the development of processors in intel that's why you will be observing many of the universities were been teaching these two processors we will discuss that in bit more detail after that after 8086 there was 80186 processor but that was not having that much magnitude as they were been expecting that's why i have not listed it over here and after 180186 80286 was there it was introduced in 
with 134000 number of transistors integrated within that and clock speed was 8 megahertz and address bus were 24 bits and data bus were 16 bits with 24 bits of address bus we can be able to interface 16 MB memory with 80286 after 80286 80386 processor was there with 275000 number of transistors integrated in it it was introduced in 1985 clock speed was 16 megahertz with that processor address and data bus were 32 bits with 32 bits of address we can be able to interface 4 gb of memory after 80386 80486 came in 1989 and there was a huge success with this processor many of the industries have adopted this processor there were 1.2 million number of transistors integrated in that and clock speed was 25 megahertz if you see address and data bus so those were 32 bits and with 32 bits of address you can be able to interface 4 gb of memory after 80486 pentium processor was introduced and with pentium intel have changed the world after Pentium, there was P1, P2, P3, P4 processor up to 2000. And you will be observing number of transistors were been increasing with respect to number of clock speed as well as computational complexity. With P4, there was 36 bits of address and 64 bits of data bus. And with 36 bits of address, we can be able to interface 64 GB of memory. And you see how much clock speed have changed with p4 clock speed was up to 1.4 gigahertz so gradual change have happened with respect to years you see it took three decades to design p4 from this initial processor 4004 after this also there are another two decades so after p4 core to duo and dual core processor was launched and after dual core Core i3, Core i5, Core i7 have been launched in 2007 and with respect to years, they were been upgrading generations. So my dear students, if you see up to P4, there were 36 bits of address and 64 bits of data, right? But after P4, you will be observing they have initiated with dual core, core to duo, and in 2007, they have launched with Core i3, Core i5, Core i7. And right now, in 2022, they are having Core i3, Core i5, Core i7, Core i9 with 11th generation of processors. So they have developed all these processors gradually, right? It took more than four decades. Right now, I can say it took five decades, 50 years. So it is not that short time it is a huge time right and right now if you observe this processor say core i3 core i5 core i7 processor so they are very complex you cannot directly understand what is happening inside you cannot understand how serial communication is happening within that how graphics is happening within inside so all those things that is next to impossible for electronics and electrical engineer to study it directly so it is very compulsory that you should clear your concepts right for that you should study 8085 in which there is a basic architecture which is there with 8085 and by that basic architecture you can understand some basic terminologies after studying that you will be able to understand how processors are working how to program processor how memory could be interfaced how many input output peripherals can be interfaced all those things that you can be able to understand in easier terminology right that's why in your university you had, you might be studying this 8085 as well as 8086 here this playlist includes everything regarding 8085 from the basics to designing of program as well as how we can interface devices with 8085 everything that i'm going to cover with this playlist and if anything that you want to ask then you just place that in comment box i will definitely try to help you out for same thank you so much for watching this video